Hello, and welcome to Shadow Patch Notes, a series where we take the latest patch and discuss all the hidden tweaks and changes that didn't quite make the spotlight. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And stick around until the end of the video to see how you can win a Cutlass Black game package. Alright, let's jump right in. We got some more multi-tool bangers to start the show. The Aurora series now has a cargo rail that can be removed and transferred to another Aurora. You can detach this 6 SCU cargo rail after unlocking all ports and use the tractor beam to pull the cargo rail off and attach it to another Aurora. All Aurora models seem to work with this. Better yet, you can fill the rail with cargo, then detach the entire rail with the cargo attached. Pretty cool. This coupled with the recent improvement to the stepladder makes the Aurora a very attractive starting ship. The orbit mining attachment now comes with a collection mode, similar to the mold and the prospector. No more tediously adding gems to your inventory. Just click B to switch between modes. The tractor beam attachment now has two modes. From here on out, cargo can only be snapped to and from the grid with the new detach mode. Tractor mode no longer does this. This was clearly intended for moving components, However, it now ensures that you won't accidentally move cargo off the grid while moving other items around. Tractor beams have also now been disabled in Armistice Zones, mainly due to people in Evocati making a mess of the show floor and stripping show components. There is a silver lining though. CIG reworked the way Armistice works so that multi-tools are enabled in hangars, very useful for moving cargo and swapping components and weapons out on the fly. Another key feature of 3.19. One final note on the tractor beam is that you no longer need to hold down left click when using the tractor beam. One click will keep it held, and another will then release. A huge quality of life improvement and a blessing for our index fingers for sure. All of the new physicalization of components applies to mining as well. You can now move mining heads, modules, and even saddlebags are detachable now. And this got me thinking, can a mining ship be pirated for profit now? We had to figure this one out. In our initial test, a mining pod in the grid would not sell from the cargo bay. However, if you swap mining pods on two different prospectors, you could instantly see their inventories change. We then took the prospector with the stolen bags and went to the refinery. And the result? Success. The ore was available to be sold or refined from the new mining ship. As a side note, if you manage to soft death a mining ship, the pods will remain with their cargo intact. It can then be removed, put into a cargo ship, and then sold or refined from a new mining ship as well. The Area 18 volumetric clouds are looking amazing. Really confused as to why this and the mining refactor aren't listed as cards on the release view, since they're both such impressive changes to the game. On that note, mining has been drastically improved across the board. I'm not going to get into too much detail here, as most of this is listed on the patch notes already, but I recommend checking out Red Monster or Kronzi if you want more info on this as it develops. Just a few quick tips to save you a little time though, the default keybind to increase laser power has been changed to Alt Scroll Wheel. I recommend switching this back because nobody really seems to like this change. Pro tip, if you're trying to insert a mining pod back into a prospector or into another prospector, it must be rotated to perfection in order to fit. This should save you about 5 minutes of struggle. Currently in PTU, everyone is spawning in with two multi-tools and various attachments. Hopefully this carries over to life. Oris and platform mercenary missions have been temporarily turned off for 319. My apologies to any max rep bunker runners in Crusader. This is most likely due to a scheduled Siege of Orison event in 319, so be ready for that. The 400i component room got some changes. In fact, a couple of ships, such as the Vulture, saw improvements for component detaching. For example, you can swap every single component manually out of an MSR now. Pulling the power plant even shut the lights off right away. Commodity prices have been tweaked. Most notably, gold is very profitable now. Whether trading or mining, look out for this valuable ore. They also nerfed it so you can only buy gold at Crusader now. Salvage missions are finally here. The one labeled as In the Wake of Disaster is a salvage contract that costs 150,000 credits as a buy-in. As far as hull scraping is concerned, it's only really worth it with a reclaimer to be honest. Although a vulture with another cargo ship could work too. Now dig on this. When doing salvage missions in 3.19, 
You can have a friend transfer the RMT to their cargo ship and sell it at a TDD if you're both in a party together and have the mission shared. I tested this myself and it does work for RMC from the mission ships. However, it does not appear to work if you go and try to salvage something else. It's a start, but they really need to get to work on a system allowing party members to sell each other's cargo without it being considered stolen under normal circumstances. Let me know if you found any different result with these missions in the comments below. But the real value to these missions comes from selling the weapons. Size 4 weapons are especially good. Pull these off of a hammerhead and you're looking at around 100 yeah, CIG nerfed this into the ground. CIG appears to have added weapon durability to these, but it doesn't seem to affect price at the moment. Also, I was unable to find any ships that had detachable components, but I'm sure you can sell those as well. Keep in mind, in order to detach weapons and components from ships, you have to enter their pilot seat and use the new port lock toggle command. Another good way to make this kind of money is with the black kite missions. You can make 140k if you complete the mission and pull all the weapons off before blowing up the reclaimer. Really good way to make some change. Just be sure to sell to an actual ship weapon store or center mass to get the highest sell value. You can find these on the item finder tool linked in the description. The area 18 ASOP terminals have been moved slightly. We had some long awaited ships added to the verse for in-game purchase. The C8R, priced at 918,000 credits which was initially 475,000. The Cutter, priced at 675,000, initially 627,000. And the Corsair, priced at 3,402,000 credits, initially 2,980,000. A couple of ship changes to quickly note as well. The RSI Mantis Quantum Tank is now 1,000, up from 583. The RSI Scorpius Antares Quantum is now 800, from 583. Many ship components now have a lower mass. This was likely done for the sake of tractor beam compatibility. However, it may have a big effect on racing performance. If you haven't seen my video on the subject, I highly recommend you check it out to see how removing components affects your ship movement and capabilities. A new Hurston outpost with a data terminal was spotted. It looks really interesting. I'm excited to see what kind of gameplay they can put here. Shout out to Lord Skippy for finding this one. Pretty cool find. Cassaba and other shops now have building blocks UI on the terminals. A place to purchase weapons has been added to Everest Harbor above Lorville. You can finally purchase guns in the Hurston system. Yes! Now, we're going to get into some controversial waters with this next section. Adjustments to insurance claim times and costs to expedite. I know this is a bit of a touchy subject, but it's a necessary step going forward to give more money sinks and also add a bit more consequence to death, incentivizing players to actually store their ships instead of just alt f 4 Insurance costs and claim times are higher for 99% of ships and vehicles. I'll leave this chart on screen for a bit so you can see. Some examples are the 890 jump went from 87 minutes and 33,000 credits to expedite to 173 minutes and 80,000 credits to expedite. Carrick at 45 minutes, 22,000 to 98 minutes and 40,000. And the C8 from 40 seconds to four minutes. This is going to eliminate a lot of instant claim time ships, meaning you're going to have to be waiting for pretty much anything you want to claim. Let me know your thoughts on this. These new uh, beautiful gardens in Lorville can be explored on foot, much like the ones in New Babbage. And now for something very near and dear to my heart. The Idris M got an interior added in-game for 319. From the images seen here, it actually looks pretty far along already. Now it's time we steal one for ourselves and check it out. If you guys want to look at how powerful these things can be in a player's hands, check out my Idris hijacking video right here. Pretty fun time. That medical area is looking nice. The Ursa rovers at Klesher have finally been put back above ground. You can now escape like you normally would. Ooh. And today we got our first look at the Misk Fury. Check this bad boy out. And that'll do it for this episode of Shadow Patch Notes. So, were any of these changes news to you? And do you plan on grabbing anything at Invictus this year? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're interested in the Cutlass Black Game Package giveaway, just be a subscriber here on YouTube and head on over to my Twitch channel where you can find the link to enter, twitch.tv slash the five star.
Come on by and say hi. Alright everybody, I'll catch you on a flip-flop. Peace out.